make him fly also. Charlotte's Hawker Show. We're back with a very special episode. Danny Brams, John Hayes. I'm taking the lead out of the gate this time. Johnny, how are you? Uh, for a very special episode, we're about to bring in a very special guest that has got huge smiles on both our faces. Yeah, I, I'm I'm doing well. I appreciate you asking. And you know, the Tifos are tremendous friends of the show, Danny. They've heard enough of me. They've heard enough of you. We've been previewing this season now for for many many weeks. It's about time they got to hear from somebody else. And by the way, somebody else who's pretty credible when when he's talking about MLS and yeah. the league ahead. Big time. John, you're a legend on the local Charlotte soccer scene. I'm trying to get there to legendary status, but we have a true legend here with us today, and I'm going to introduce him with a beautiful uh, video clip that uh, big time MLS fans have seen many, many times before. We'll play it in. Kaku. Good ball. Finds Wright Phillips. Bradley Wright Phillips with the flag down. Shooting. He scores, and there it is. Goal number 100 went right through Ostend. Wright Phillips, ready for the occasion, has given the Red Bulls the lead and dressed in the proper attire. He didn't expect it this soon, and look at this goal. A mistake by Ostad. We talked about the weather, the rain. Bradley Wright Phillips knows if he gets a look, cut it back to the right foot, whips it near post skims under Dave Ostad, Bradley Wright Phillips, number 100. He's going to take it, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Charlotte Soccer Show, an MLS legend, an Apple TV broadcasting legend in the making, Bradley Wright Phillips. BWP, how's it going? Thank you for the warm welcome, man. That was nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. You've absolutely. seen that play, I'm sure, a few times before. For those who aren't in the know, that was BWP's 100th goal scored, fastest in MLS history. No big deal. Century mark. When it happened, <laughs> some some guy that played for Atlanta that I that I guess he was pretty good. So I guess beat the record. They were cheating. Tata was just you know <laughs> running up the score down there. But uh, oh, shout yeah, out to the breaking record. But BWP. A great New York Red Bull, a Columbus Crew, LAFC. You've played for some of the greatest clubs in, in, in the United States. You played for Manchester City in the Premier League. And you are now uh, coming into the hearts and homes of MLS fans all over the country uh, as part of MLS 360 on Apple TV+. Plus. Welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Can't wait to talk. Let's catch up. Yeah, if I could jump in here, Danny. I mean, the first thing I want to uh, you know ask uh, Brad is simply – MLS in general, right? Like you've you've now been such a great player in this league, and now you have the ability to represent this league in this is brand new way, if you will. Year two of of MLS on MLS season pass on Apple TV. It's it's been an amazing resource for fans. What's it been like for you to make that jump from hey, I'm on the field, I'm scoring goals, to now I'm in your living room yeah. uh, talking about the league? Yeah, um, weird in the beginning, you know. Um, I'd never done anything like this before. Uh, when I retired, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I know I wanted to get rest. That didn't go to plan. I haven't slept since I retired. So that's been hard, but it's been fun. Learning on the job, it, it's been fun. You know, when they, they throw a camera in your face, an earpiece in and then ask you to talk about the game, it's a lot more difficult than, than I would have thought. But I feel I got more comfortable on set and yeah, I'm enjoying it. The tough part is though, talking about players you know, you don't want to offend anyone, but you also have to be true to yourself and be real about the game. But it's been really good and enjoyable experience. Yeah, talking about players you know, uh, Bradley, you want to get into a guy who was a teammate of yours for many years uh, in the New York Red Bulls and now is a favorite here uh, locally here in Charlotte. Uh, Lloyd Sam is a broadcaster. He's going to become a broadcaster just like you. And he's become a huge fan favorite. Everybody loves him. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this picture here that we found there's you going to work on Michael Bradley, American soccer legend. And there's Lloyd just kind of staring in the background. He's not helping you out at all, man. What happened? Just doing nothing, as per usual. He just wants me to go do all the work and, and get a goal. I need you, Lloyd. I need you to come and double press or make an angle for me so I can play you. Um, nah, Lloydie, man. That, honestly, he's like a brother to me. Um, yeah. 
And let's shout him out quickly on the commentary side of things. Listen, this is a man that was was grinding, you know, doing shows by himself with with little to no experience. And I think for me personally, not being biased, he's like one of the, the better, you know, commentators we have in this country. He's been he's been really good. I'm happy for him. And I, and he talks to me about Charlotte like every day. We play Call of Duty together at night. So he's always talking about how nice the city is, how good the people are and how he feels about the franchise in general. Nice. How's we're going to we're going to talk to you about Charlotte too, for sure. We're definitely going to talk I, to you about Charlotte. <laughs> I, I got to know how's the Call of Duty game though. I mean, you guys playing every night. Yeah, man. We squad up. Me and Lloyd. We we don't. If he's not playing, I'm not playing. If I'm not playing, he's not playing. We're good. We're not bad. There's room for improvement, but we're a good little duo. Always. Let me mention that Lloyd is do is. I saw the uh, announcement. The announcer teams announced today for the first week of the season, Danny. I think it was announced today. But I saw yep. Lloyd was on the Charlotte, uh, New York City FC yep. call uh, this Saturday night at the Keep, which is going to be amazing to have Lloyd on that call. And then mm -hmm. WP, you're going to be in the MLS 360 booth as well. So how does that work, right? Where you're you're sitting in the the studio, you're watching all these games. Um, you're bouncing around from game to game. Are you assi assigned a couple games to keep an eye on beforehand or or is your head on a swiv swivel trying to keep up with many games that kick off at the same time? So listen, so it's how you just said it before. We're not assigned to any game. You're just watching. You're trying to look out for all the highlights. You're trying to look at me personally. I'm looking out for all the attacking plays that I can really analyze and try and show to the um, fans. We tried it once, like what you said, like try and just assign each analyst a, a few games. But it's so difficult because when football's on in the background, if you're seeing something, I'm going to lose focus on my game and go to, a, you know, another game. So it's just it's just on the analyst and, and the host to keep an eye on every game, see what's happening. Also, production team will help us out and let us know if, um, if there's something we need to see. But it isn't easy. I think that was the toughest part of 360 last year. It was because we're in studio, we're not getting to watch 90 minute, the 360 show especially, we're not getting to watch a 90 minute game. So I don't want to now talk about Charlotte in depth. That's why we try and just keep it to the highlights, the good plays, talking points, because it would be unfair of me to talk about Charlotte the whole game if I've just seen they lost 2-1. But little do I know, they could have been the better team for, for 89 minutes of that game. So that's where it was difficult, you know, balancing what you, what you say and how you get this information over to the fans, the viewers. It's such an interesting perspective, uh, you know, because you're right. I mean, as a, you know, Charlotte obviously heading into their their third season, I wasn't as familiar with with MLS. I moved out of Philadelphia right before that franchise launched. I moved down here to Charlotte, and and it was not an MLS city. So when when Charlotte came into the league, I, I wasn't necessarily familiar with uh, all the players and all the different teams. So when you do that on 360, when I do get a chance to sit down and watch the show, I feel like I learned something. So I, I, how how are you threading the needle between Right, trying to create an entertaining product, right? You want to people sit down and get to know your personality a bit, but also educate the fans as well. Yeah, that's that's the bit I'm still learning. You gotta remember I've only been in this a year now. And it's I think in the beginning, I think I focused more on the information side and not messing up. But now I just want to be uh, Bradley. Um when I sit and talk to my friends about football, you know, we have highly informational, intelligent conversations, but I'm not I'm not acting a certain way, I'm being myself and eventually I want to get to a place where I'm talking like this. You know, I think even this is way more comfortable for me than when you're on a show because there's a lot of things that go into it. But yeah, eventually I want it to look like this. I want it to feel as natural as possible. I want people to, to know Bradley. I think if you've watched MLS over the years or even a bit of English football, you just know the goal scorer, you know, the guy that's moaning when I don't get a, uh, a foul. You just know, you know what I mean? Just a, the player. And now it's just my time to to show people, you know, how I am as a person. I've got a little sense of humor and I can talk about goals and attacking plays in depth. So that's what I'm trying to bring across. So I got a question. What is the, the thing that Apple is known for is always getting better, right? Apple's going to put something out there. It's going to be as good as it possibly can be. And then they're going to analyze it and try to make it better. They iterate, right. you know, there's a new iPhone every year, you know, for yeah. a reason, right? <laughs> so what is, what are some of the things that excite you the most about iteration? Like the two, the second year, like how Apple's going to keep growing and how do you see that commitment to like, if we're going to make it as good as possible now, and then we're going to get feedback and make it even better as we keep going. Yeah. Well, I think for the first year last year, it was, it was good considering, you know, we were, everyone was new into this There's a bunch of new analysts, a bunch of new hosts, um, so I think it went very well, but yeah, we had talked and thought what we could improve on. I think more shows for the for the viewers and for the people around the world. We're in a hundred countries, so it'd be good to show them our league, um, get more coverage on the fan bases and stuff. So I think they'll add that. We've got a show in the week, the preview show, where we'll talk about all the big stories that happened in the um, 
over the weekend or just in the week just gone. So we'll do that. And then we're changing a few things in 360 that I won't tell you now because we'll be ruining it, right? But you gotta watch, few, you gotta yeah, tune in. We've taken some feedback from from um viewers, you know, and we try and add it into the show. Not everything they'll get, but there's some things that we agree on and we'll try and bring that into the show. I do know you have a new host, right? Yeah, Kevin Egan's coming. Kevin Egan. So, and so, yeah. and also a whole new Spanish language team. So there's a Spanish version of the show. So that's just some of the expansion that's going exactly. on. It has been. Yeah. Uh, DWP, you mentioned the, the idea of bringing MLS to an international audience, which is which is really cool. And I think Apple, when I saw that deal signed, it was the first thing that I thought about. Wow, this is great. The ability to take MLS globally. It's such a global game. There's so many people that can, I think, um, recognize that MLS is a is a good league. Yeah. There's no doubt, no doubt about that. So we have an international manager now for 2024 and Dean Smith. He signs on during the offseason. And we've heard some quotes coming out of training camp about a British preseason feel. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got <laughs> Ashley Westwood, we've got Scott Arfield, uh, Nathan Byrne, you know, a lot of players on our team that have had a nice, uh, you know, UK footy upbringing. What, yeah. what is that? When you hear the term British preseason, as somebody that's done that many yeah. times in your career, what does that mean? That to me, when I, when I hear that sentence, it means don't bring the bulls out to training today. You're going to run <laughs> <laughs> it means you don't need your boots. You don't need balls. You're going to run. That's that's a, that's what I envision. I guess nowadays um, the game has changed. I think there'll be a lot more football. But what I will expect from Dean Smith is, yeah, it will be tough. It will be, it will be honest. I think the advantage we have in the English game or maybe European game, and, and one of the only advantages is that there's a – because of relegation, there's more on the line. So Dean Smith, he's not just going to forget – you know, how he coached abroad, like when he was back in England, he's going to bring those same, um, those same demands to Charlotte. And I think the players would only benefit from that. When we were going into preseason in England, we had to be ready to, to fight all season long so we don't get relegated, so people don't lose their jobs. And I think for any English coach, any English player that comes over to America, I think you have to use that as a, as a superpower almost. I think that's what got me through you know, my MLS career, I felt like I had an edge because I I took every game, every chance I had to score. It was literally like my last because I, I played with a, a fear of, you know, my whole career that you could be relegated or you could be, you could lose your job here. And I think if Dean Smith can instill that into the players, you're looking at a, a hard to beat Charlotte side. I don't know if that made sense. I felt like I was rambling. But, it did, oh, it made, no, perfect it made perfect sense. sense. It's mu music to our ears as well. Yeah, that, it's exactly what you said. The players have said it's about running. Like a yeah. British preseason just means running and running and running. I love the way you phrased this. Like, don't even bring the balls out to practice today, guys. Like, <laughs> you're not going to need them. Yeah. Um, I And I think, like, it's interesting. It's kind of funny that our tagline here on Charlotte FC is for the crown, you know, so it's it only fitting, you know, that we have, like, a lot of the British influence. <laughs> yeah. And I think it'll help us because one of our characteristics last year was losing leads late, yeah. conceding late goals and things like that. So I think fitness and just, like, you can never be too fit, right? You can always be, you know, be a little bit faster. Exactly. It, it helps you in the, in later stages of the season, later stages in the game, knowing that you're fitter, knowing that you have 10% more in the tank. It, it can get you over the line. I'll tell you, our Red Bull team was like that. We knew we could, we could at least run further than the other team. You, you mentioned Red Bulls. We've already shown a, a, a Red Bull highlight on the show, which, by the way, we're, we're making a special exception for our special guests <laughs> on the show doing that. Because what's happened quickly, BWP, is, is that in these first two seasons for Charlotte FC, you start to develop rivalries and teams mm -hmm. that you go up against and feel yeah. like there's some history there. And you get knocked out of the U.S. Open Cup in the first season against Red Bulls. And then you go play them in the playoffs and you get spanked as well. Mm -hmm. um, so Red Bulls, you know, Charlotte has, has a bit of a chip on the shoulder against uh, New York Red Bulls team. What a Red Bull look like this year, and and uh, do you think this this matchup between Charlotte and, and New York Red Bull can turn into a bit of a rivalry? Well, first of all, on your comment just about the the, the young rivalry, I think that's amazing about um, MLS. You know, there's new when the expansion teams come in or just new teams, we get to see that live, like a, a rivalry, like hate building. You know, and it will, it will make for classic games. On t in terms of the Red Bull team, I think last year they had an amazing defense. If you look at Red Bull's defensive record, the, the goals they conceded, it's up there with, you know, uh, a shield winning team. They just couldn't get it done on the other end uh, often enough. I think they bring in now Emil Forsberg, mm -hmm. who was at the end of the season. Uh, Great signing. 
he's, he's having an amazing preseason and from all accounts as well. Listen, I've been lucky enough to watch him train a few times. He, the football IQ is on a different level. It's a, it's a brilliant right. signing for the for the club. Yeah. And then they just need someone to now take the ownership of getting the goals for that team. And if you do, you have that you have a, a playmaker, if you've got a goal scorer and a solid backline. Um Red Bull can do well. They can do well. And then when I look at the matchup with you guys and what Dean Smith is bringing in, I'm seeing two teams that want to battle that will leave everything thing out on the field and it it just makes for an exciting game. Yeah. Well, I, I hope they don't find someone to do, the, to do that scoring that you mentioned because I hate New York Red Bull, New Jersey Red Bull, as I like to call them. But <laughs> it's not personal against you, BWP. I'm a huge respecter of your work in this league and, okay, and now with Apple on 360 and everything you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks for, so much for, for joining our show today. And I think you know part of the reason we wanted to do this is create a touch point. You know, there's so many fans within the Charlotte FC fan base that that tune into MLS season pass and getting to know somebody like yourself um, on a show like this. I appreciate you taking your time because now I think when Charlotte FC fans can sign in and and watch 360, they say, "Oh, there, there's there's BWP." You got to know him a little bit. Buddy. Just to the Charlotte fans out there, I'm a friendly guy, man. You you can root for me, man. We're family well, now. We the oh, national the national media has all, has all picked us at the bottom. Like all the MLS pundits have us at the bottom. So we have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder about that. <laughs> but that's good. What happened with St. Louis? We done that with uh, St. Louis last season. Look how they played. They Amazing. Carry a team. You need a chip yeah. on your shoulder. It's 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 so difficult. I mean, the league is growing so quickly. There's so many new players every year coming into the season. And you know, I told Danny before we did our prediction show uh, for our season preview episode, I said, "Hey, just so you know, Danny, none of these predictions actually matter because MLS is so difficult it's to so predict." Hard to, yeah, it's so difficult. Yes, it is. No. So well, we we appreciate you taking the time. You come back. And I uh, just you come just back, one final back throughout the season, BWP. Yeah, we we've got to get you back on here at some point Probably, for sure. I got okay. a hot take actually. So yeah, I'll come back in the season. I'm gonna tell you this now. Enzo Capetti will be in the in the argument for uh, Golden Boot. I don't know how far up that thing, but I think he will be in there. I, I looked at some of his goals from last season. I love his movement around the box, his desire to score goals. If you can get someone that can really get him serviced, two chances a game, you're looking at a real, a real exciting prospect of a of a goal scorer. We're vibing on this show, and I'll tell you why. Is because Danny asked me if that was my final question, and I said yes, and I was kicking myself very quickly because I wanted to ask you about Enzo, but you answered the question that I was thinking about that I didn't ask. And I spoke to him in Miami. He told me he's going to get 50 goals, so you heard it here. Bro. 50? He said 50. I don't know if he understood my English properly, but he said 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both know Enzo's a confident guy. There's no doubt about that. And I think, I think honestly, some of the MLS rule changes this season will benefit Enzo. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as trying, you know, he, he's a player that liked to slow the game down a little bit, spent a lot of time on the floor. And now with the league trying to, to, to regulate that a bit. I think Enzo is going to have a good season because of that. But yeah. cheers to you, BWP. And, and if you get a chance to come down to Charlotte this year, um, we've got a, we've got a party waiting for you at hot fly. We'll get, we'll get Sam over there, Lloyd over good. there, and then we'll have a good time with it. So cheers. That's to you. Good, man. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Good luck this season. Thank you. Bye-bye. Peace for the crown, baby.